Bailey, don't you think it's amazing that the human race can build structures this big? Oh, yeah. We've got so many complex structures here that we can live and work and play in. I mean, we can go to restaurants or have transportation that'll take us anywhere we want to go. We got it all. Yeah. Hey, do you think any other creature even comes close to creating what we can create? Well, let's go find out. Jonas is on the case. That's right. Well, maybe not exactly the same, but the structures in the place we're heading to today also provide homes, shelter, and even sometimes transportation to an enormous number of organisms. So we're heading to one of the marine biodiversity hotspots, the coral reefs of Southeast Asia. I have been fortunate to have dived coral reefs several times during my travels and studies, but every time they blow me away with their incredible beauty and biodiversity. And the most amazing thing is that everything starts with a group of tiny little organisms. Have you ever thought about what a coral really is? Is it an animal? Is it a plant? Or is it a rock? In fact, it's a combination of all three. Check this out. Corals are small animals in the phylum Cnidaria, which also includes the jellyfish and the anemones. Corals are then generally divided up into hard, sclerotinian corals and soft corals. The corals that build up the hard coral reefs are made by the reef-building hard corals. One coral colony may hold thousands of small individuals, called polyps. Together they secrete a hard calcium carbonate skeleton. This is what you find washed up on the shores. So it's only the surface of the reef that is living tissue. The interior of the reef is always a dead mineral structure. This process sure takes a lot of energy, and for this, corals have developed a very special relationship. Oh, look at this water, it's so clear. When you see this, it's hard to believe that the waters around tropical coral reefs is really nutrient poor. So where does all the nutrients and energy come from that support this great diversity of life? Well, even though coral reefs are mostly on the water, just like in every habitat, it starts up there with the sun. Let's dive in again so I can show you. The color of many corals is actually due to a tiny microalgae called a sosanthelae. These little dinoflagellate algae use sunlight to photosynthesize and gives off excess energy to the coral. The growing tips of the coral are white because they still haven't acquired a symbiotic algae. Growth and reproduction of corals can occur in a few different ways. They can either reproduce sexually or asexually. For example, fragments of an existing colony can break off and start a new colony that grows and expands asexually through the budding of old polyps. A completely new colony starts as the coral releases eggs and sperms into the water. The fertilized eggs develop into a planktonic larva that drifts with the currents to a new location. The larva eventually settles on a hard surface the individual polyps expand the colony by budding a new polyp from the old polyps. Therefore, the first polyp to settle becomes the parent of all the other polyps of the colony. The colony grows as each polyp continues to divide, as well as participating in the construction of the hard calcium carbonate framework. And their constructions are truly impressive. But are they in any way really important to us? Scientists call them the, the rainforest of the oceans because it's the only marine ecosystem that uh, come near the, the number of species that we find in a rainforest. If you look at the global map and you see the coral reefs, you might think that they would be insignificant because it's less than 2% of the surface of the oceans. But in terms of production, in, in, in some places in Southeast Asia, um, they count up to, to maybe 50% of the coastal primary production. And when it comes to the fish resources, one example is Indonesia. It, it has been roughly calculated that 50% uh, of the protein is from the sea. And of that 50%, 50% is coral reef fish. So you have 25% of a nation's protein supply from coral reef associated fish. 
So the coral reefs here are extremely important to the people living here in more than one way. But I also found out that they're becoming increasingly threatened. There are many threats to coral reefs. In general, I would say that the reefs that we find most important for mankind, they are relatively near shore. This means that they're also affected by everything that goes on on land, since the heavy rains that fall here wash much of the sediment out to sea. The visibility goes down and light transparency is reduced, and that is actually recognized as the major problem for coastal reefs. On top of that, you have uh, eutrophication, true or not, but the global warming, threat from destructive fishing methods, everything from cyanide to primitive explosives, threatens, of course, the three-dimensional framework of the reef. I had yet again been amazed by the beauty of the coral reefs, but they had also left me thinking. I had seen how the people here literally lived together with the ocean and how important the existence of the coral reefs were in their lives, both by attracting tourists like myself, but also as a vital source of food. At the same time, I'd also seen the threats to the reefs. For me, another day of coral reef diving has come to an end, but I'm already looking forward to tomorrow. If you want to learn more about the coral reefs and the organisms here, check out untamedscience.com.